Hello, welcome again to my wood shop. Uh, this time we're going to do a, a bandsaw box uh, of a little bit of a different design. Um, everything you're going to need for the project is pretty much right here on the bandsaw, which is the main component. That's why it's a bandsaw box. So, uh, as far as the obvious aside, what we've got here is the laminated blank that I'm going to be using. It's uh, laminated with poplar and zebra wood, front and back. And I glued it together, and this paper here was just what it was sitting on so the glue wouldn't get all over my, my uh, bench or my uh, makeshift little hardboard glue-up table. And then uh, what we'll end up doing is after this gets laminated, uh, you can see it's kind of protruding on the sides here, which isn't really going to matter because what we're going to wind up doing is cutting out our pattern, which is right here, and then we're going to use this spray adhesive to spray it and put it on the blank and then we're going to cut the templates out from there and the template has a uh, cut out for the box, a cut out for the drawer insert and if I choose to use this type of knob the knob is there as well. Uh, I'm going to be needing uh, a few tools for the project here uh, a good uh, little square uh, this one happens to be a six inch square a combination square because I'm working with longer stock so I'm going to need a longer square. Uh, my six inch ruler for uh, those little measurements uh, comes in quite handy. Um, what else have I got here? My uh, sanding spindle here for the drill press because we're going to need to get into a few contours. Scissors obviously to cut the project out. Uh, pencil for marking. Uh, for later on we got the finishing, the, the walnut oil, uh, the container to heat the walnut oil up in. Uh, if you've seen my uh, last show where I worked on a Red Heart bandsaw box, I used the walnut oil on it. And I used this to put the oil in to heat it up because hot oil uh, absorbs and spreads nicer and gets into the pores of wood easier and better than cold oil does. Uh, a sanding stick uh, to clean off the abrasive wheel and the uh, possible need for using the uh, 6x48 inch belt sander which is in the background there which is right there. I gotta get the red heart dust off of it. And what else is here? Oh, uh, something that gets overlooked fairly often and is useful in many shops. Some people get away with using an X-Acto knife to scrape down their pencils and stuff because of a lack of a pencil sharpener. So, simple little thing. Probably get, what, a three or four in a package from the dollar store or something. Uh, other than that, that's pretty much it. You got here, you need your uh, shop towels for any spill cleanups or to spread the oil, uh, to help spread it around. Uh, I find it a little bit easier to use than dealing with brushes and, and stuff like that. I won't have to worry about clean up of a brush afterwards. We're just kind of wiping the finish on, but we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves because we're talking about finishing when we haven't even started. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all this off, get this all set up. Uh, my bandsaw still has a 1 8 inch blade. I'm going to leave that blade on. Because if you've seen in the last video with my Red Heart bandsaw box, uh, I was able to cut through uh, a couple of inches thick of, well, maybe two and a quarter inches anyways, of ash wood and the Red Heart, and it left an extremely smooth finish. Um, I don't know how many teeth per inch are on the blade, I forgot, I think it's in the area of 12 teeth per inch for the 1 8 inch blade. Um, I'll have to kind of double check that. But uh, other than that, we're going to leave that blade on. It'll leave a nice smooth finish. The key is go slow. Go slow. Don't be in a rush. Uh, especially if you want to give this as a gift or something you're going to have around to show off to be proud of. Uh, there's no sense in rushing uh, and making mistakes or making it look um, not as good as it could be 
or causing yourself more work in the fact of having to do more sanding. So nobody likes to do any sanding so a little patience taking your time goes a long way. So I'm going to clear this stuff off the bandsaw, we're going to get this all set up, I'm going to get my pattern cut out, glued on, and then we're going to begin our cuts and begin the project. So stick around and we'll be back in a moment. We're back. Alright, so what I've done is I've uh, uh, cut out the template, I've put some spray adhesive on, and I've pretty much picked the area of the wood that I want this to be on. I want to kind of keep the same aspect ratio, I didn't want to make this too much bigger. I wanted to keep the kind of the slim effect there. And the leftover wood will just be used for some kind of scrap wood project at some point in the future, pen blanks or something like that. Alright, so we're going to get this uh, up to the uh, point of no return and begin cutting. I'm going to turn on my dust collector and we're going to get this party started. Here we go.
couple of nibbling cuts here. So I can get in so the blade can come this way now. Fuck me! 
tank taken care of. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn off the dust collector. So that's pretty much it. That's pretty well the shape of the box right there. That's the that's the rough main shape there. That's going to be that can be the front or the back. I haven't exactly decided how I want it to be yet, but we just simply peel this off, and then we'll have our outline of the box. So I'll get this taken off, cleaned up, and then I'll uh, go on to the next step from there. Stick around. Okay, so we've got our uh, basic outline shape taken care of. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quarter of an inch off the back. So this way, when we take that off from there, then we can continue with uh, getting the next part done. So let's get this on the bandsaw, get that taken care of, and get to cutting. I'm going to turn on my uh, dust collector and then uh, back to work. So. Here we go. see here, if you can see it, come around here and zoom this out a little bit. Oops, wrong way, wrong way. Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all this dust off of here. Now, don't know if you can see it, but that That is a pretty good cut. That is a pretty darn good cut. The only thing I'm noticing is somewhere down here, I think, there's a little ridge line. Only because that's where I kind of stopped when I used the push stick, so I just got that a little bit there. But that is one heck of a smooth cut. And this is the backing piece that comes off. And this is all just some fuzz stuff there because the bandsaw blade was cutting down. So you got small pieces of fuzzy tear out happening there. But that is not a bad cut. If I look at this as close as I can into the light, you may see some real fine lines there from that bandsaw. So. Not too bad, not too bad if I say so myself. Okay, so we've cut out that uh, back part there. Now we're going to uh, set up for the drawer, cut it out, and then we're going to uh, continue from there. So, I'm going to get set up for the drawer, and I'll be back in a moment. Stick around. Okay, so what we've got here, I've put on my uh, template for the drawer insert kind of put it in an area that I want it to be in. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to come in from one of these grain lines here and then I'm going to make my first cut come along the top here and then I'll stop over here. Then I'm going to back the saw out, the saw blade out after it's come to a stop. Then I'm going to come back in again and then I'm going to come down and do the lower part, come back up and meet up with the other cut line, turn the bandsaw off, 
and then we should be able to get the blade out and then this should all be able to just slide right out. So, I'm going to turn on my dust collector and we're going to get the cotton. dust collector so I don't have to yell above it. Alright, so what we do now is we slowly ease the blade the blade back through the cut. And then once we get that blade out, we can slide our piece right out of there. And then what we can do once we have that, that's it. That's our uh, that's our exterior right there. That's our shell. Shouldn't have done that in front of the camera, but anyway. So, there you have it. Let's zoom out a little bit. So that's what it begins with. Uh, the outer case as. And then this here, what ends up happening is, we just open this up just a little bit. Not too much. You don't want to break the fibers out over here. So I just open this just a little bit and just hold it open with my thumb and finger and then I'll get some crazy glue or cyanoacrylate glue if you want to get technical about it. We'll get it in there on one side and then clamp it together and once it's clamped together put a little pressure on it and then I'll hit it with some accelerator and then we'll be working on this while this kind of clamps and dries although it's only going to take 15 seconds. So, we're going to get set up for the next part, and then we're going to continue with our zebra wood bandsaw box. Stick around. What we've got here now is the box, like I mentioned earlier, has its kerf cut here, and we came in and we cut out our drawer. 
And now, what we're going to do, before we get back to work on the drawer, because while the drawer is being worked on, this can be glued up and ready to go. So we're going to take some of our uh, cyanoacrylate glue, and I'm going to, just with my fingers, I'm going to pull on this to open, and then I'm going to push my thumb and finger into that joint to hold it open. And then I'm going to take my cyanoacrylate, or crazy glue, however you want to term it, and then I'm going to put it in here, on the, on the bottom side here, and I'm going to try to not overfill it, try to get in too much in the way of like a squeeze out, so it doesn't look like a big mess on the inside. Even though you're not really going to see it too much, it's more of a... It's, it's more of an aesthetic thing for myself personally. Um, you know, some people don't worry about too much, too, worry too much about how much glue they put into the joint for something like this. Other people do. Uh, I'm one of those people who uh, pay a little more attention than I probably should. But uh, I'm just not a big fan of having to sand inside corners and stuff like that. And trust me, after you do it a couple times, you're not going to be a big fan of it either. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to zoom out just a little bit here, and then we'll get started with the glue process. So I'm going to take my glue nozzle, and uh, oh, before I continue, I just want to mention that yes, I'm wearing a dust mask because the fumes of this stuff is pretty nasty stuff. It'll make your eyes water and everything. It's it is some pretty caustic stuff, let me tell you. Okay, so we get our glue nozzle in there and just gently, gently, gently till I can start getting some glue come out of there. Just use the applicator as a little bit of a brush to go along the edges here. There we go. And then I just want to get a little bit to the inside. If I need to pry this open more, I'll take my hand in there and that'll open it up. Be careful not to open too much because you don't want to start hearing a cracking noise. That is the last thing you want to hear. Alright, so I've got that there right up to the edges so we get ourselves a good glue joint on each side there and throughout the middle. Now I'm going to line this up as best I can. And then we're going to try to get this to be flush as much as possible. That's not too bad. And then we're going to clamp it down. I'm going to grab my accelerator. Spritz, spritz, and spritz. Clamp it. Good clamping pressure. About 10 or 15 seconds. You can see the accelerator, what it's doing there. You can see that white little chalky uh, crystallizing line happening there. That's kind of like, that's kind of what accelerator does. It kind of speeds up the curing process here. Alright, that's been about a good 15 seconds, so I'm pretty sure we're beyond the point of no return at this point. We're not too bad here. I can't go sideways at this point from here unless I want to break that joint. And all I'll do is I'll just put a little bit of downward pressure. A count of five. And we're good. So now we've got what looks like this. So we'll end up sanding this and then that'll look pretty good. Once we get this sanded, you can hardly see the line that's in there. And what you see over here will be taken up. That little gap that you're seeing in there that you can see through. See? Hello. Okay, that'll be taken up with the drawer. So we've got that taken care of. That's glued up. The outside is ready. As far as sanding the inside, the only thing I might want to sand is just the bottom area a little bit. I'm not sure if you can see it. Maybe if I get some light in there. I got light. Might as well make use of it. All right. So you can see there's a ridge here. There's a couple little ridges here. Nothing major. But it's pretty fuzzy. So I'll just give it a real light sanding, like a 400 grit, just to take the fuzziness away because I don't want to open this up too much more because I want a nice tight looking fit for that drawer. Alright, so we've got that taken care of. We're going to go back and take care of taking the front and back off the drawer and then we're going to hog out the drawer. So I'm going to set this back up for the bandsaw cam view and we'll be back. Stick around. Alright, so what we've got here now is uh, the drawer itself and what I need to do is I'm going to cut off a quarter inch 
from the front and back and then we're going to hog out the sides. Now I've got this, I don't have it so that it's sitting it's normal straight up and down like you would like you would normally have it as if it was going in and out of the actual drawer itself. What I've done to cut it is I've got it upside down to prevent it from rocking. So this way it's not going to rock back and forth. See I can move this around and I'll shake the bandsaw more than I'll ever shake the actual piece of wood. If I was to flip this over like that, you can see just from that see how unstable that is? That is not going to be a good safe cut. It's going to make for a lot of uh, a lot of sanding to do. It's not going to be a clean cut. It's just going to be pretty miserable. So I'm going to take my piece, flip it upside down. That's not going anywhere. So I'm going to get this uh, all set up here. I'm going to turn on my dust collector and uh, we're going to get this drawer done. Here we go. takes care of that. We've cut the front and back off of the drawer. Now what I'm going to do, so I don't goof this up, because I've got a tendency to do foolish things like that. Since I'm going to hog this area out in here, this would be a good idea if I kind of backed away from all this here. There. Okay, so since I'm going to basically hog away all this stuff that's in here, It'd be kind of pointless to write front and back on the part that I'm about to cut out. So what I'm going to do is just down maybe at the bottom here, 
I've already got where it's written front and back, but just to kind of emphasize it, I'm going to write the word back here, and then with this piece that I've just cut, I'm going to mark that one as well. Let's get this out of the way. Get this out of the way. Okay, so how do I know, especially if uh, this has all been moved around, I could just follow my grain lines. You can see the grain lines there, how they sort of line up, so that's how I know. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to, that's going to be the outside, this is going to be the inside. So what I'm going to wind up doing is marking the word back on the inside corner, just a little letter B. That's all. And then for the other side, I'll just put a little letter F and then the letter F for this one as well. There. Okay, so now we're going to take our front and back sides, get them out of the way. <clears throat> now, the inside, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to figure out just how I'm going to mark this. So I'm going to set this up in a little bit of a different area. So this way I can show you how I do it. And uh, I won't have to contort around the bandsaw. So, be back in a moment. Okay, so what we're going to do now, in order for me to take out what I want from the middle here, I'm not going to do too much in the way of freehand, and I'm not going to have like my, my Red Heart bandsaw box where I had sharp corners on the inside. I'm not going to do a 90 degree angle here, and then a 90 degree angle over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have this curve sweep and follow the contour. Now, I've decided on the measurement of about 3 eighths of an inch. That seems to be a pretty good general uh, measurement as far as bandsaw boxes go. Uh, certain woods you get away with, you know, like a quarter inch or a little bit less less than that. But uh, three eighths of an inch is pretty much standard, and uh, it's just don't need to go three eighths of an inch for zebra wood because zebra wood is a pretty dense, heavy wood. But I just think that you know, for three-eighths of an inch, I'm going to have more than enough surface, uh, glue surface, for when I put my front and back facing on, that I'm not going to have to worry about it being a little bit too thin. I'm going to have enough stock there so that the glue will be able to do a good job holding. All right, so what I'm going to do here, just so I don't freehand it and make it look more brutal than it should be, is I'm going to mark off three-eighths of an inch, which will be right about here, and then I'll mark three-eighths of an inch from here. Okay, right about there. And then I'll do three-eighths of an inch from here. Might be better if I do it this way. Now, I'm not going to end up taking a ruler and lining up, lining up, lining up. I will freehand this part of it, but at least I'm going to have a guideline to follow so that I'll be pretty much three-eighths of an inch all the way around. Now if that's three, right there. Okay, so now that I've got my little dots here, you can kind of see the white dots as they go around. So I'm going to freehand that, follow it. So I'm just going to take my little china marker that works quite well on this wood. Okay, so I'm going to come down like this I'm going to come through here, and now I'm just going to follow here. I'm not going to push with the pencil hand. I'm actually pulling the wood and just holding the pencil in the same spot. Now I've got a tiny little groove here I can see, so I'm going to have to freehand this. I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can see it, but there's just that right here, just a little bit of a a little indentation there, so I'm going to need to freehand this part, otherwise I'm going to end up cutting out the groove. Kind of like when a router bit is following along with the roller guide bearing, and all of a sudden you come to a little dip in your fence, and that 
dip gets transferred to your workpiece. Alright, so now follow the three eighths, follow the three eighths. Uh, making this look pretty brutal. And then we come through here and we round this up just like that. And up and out. Oops, sorry. Okay, so that's what we've got. Now I'm just going to make this line just a touch darker. So it'll be a little easier to follow. No need much. There we go. Okay, so this is all in here. A keeper for another project. But this is the waste here. All of this is going to go. And we're going to be left with this thin piece right here. And that's going to become the inner part of the drawer. And we glue our front and back on to get our drawer front and drawer back back on there. And then we continue from there. All right, we're all set up, ready to take out the waste portion of our drawer. So let's get started. Be helpful if this stays in position. down so there's no risk of an accident or an injury. Zoom this right out. Uh, I just fell over over there, not a big deal. Alright, so what we've got now is the waste part has been cut out. That's all waste. Okay, this will be used for other projects for something different. I don't know yet what, but we'll figure something out. And now all of this in here, that's just sawdust, that is the drawer. And, once I clean that out, I'll need to get in there to sand it a little bit because it does have some ridges. Not too many, it's not a bad cut, but considering poplar being a bit of a softer kind of a wood. I'm going to get in there and sand that up, so we're going to take this over to the other uh, workbench there and get set up with some sandpaper and we'll continue from there so be back in a moment alright so we got set up here at the drill press table I got my uh, little spindle sander on there for the drill press and uh, it's a fairly rough sandpaper wheel that I got on there we're just gonna get in here we're gonna rough this up a little bit smooth it out as best we can with this wheel and then we'll switch over to uh, one of the smoother wheels and then finish off the inside from there it's gonna take my little rubber stick I'm gonna clean this off here There's not too much on here but just get it nice and cleaned up get rid of that red heart that's in there I can see a little red dust You don't want any of that getting into the pores of the zebra wood or anything like that. There we go. 
good. All right, so we're going to get this in there. We're going to start hogging out this inside here, get it smooth, and then we're going to go from there. Since the rotation of the wheel is going this way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it this way. If I push it the other way, I don't want this to end up going with the direction of this and, and skipping along. So I'm going to bring it in here and I'm going to go against the rotation. All right, let's begin. see a bit of the difference here. You can see how it's a little bit cleaner down here and it's a little bit hazier up here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over and then I'm going to work from this side now. Raise this up a little bit. So now, it's not too shabby, I'm going to get in there from the other side again, continue. This might take a little bit of sand in here. I'm trying to keep this as flat as possible on the table, so I don't get any rocking motion like this or whatever, I get some uneven sanding. I'm not pushing too hard into the spindle sander, really. Just want to have it so that I need to take a little more off here. Try to get it as even as I can. Getting there. That side's good. I got a little bit left to work over on this side here. And that's feeling pretty good. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to the smaller and a little bit of a smoother sander sanding uh, wheel here and then we'll take this off a chuck put the other one on in order to put this on I go all the way up and then I bring it down about a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch and then I tighten I go until I get finger tight here so it holds over the next one tighten a sixteenth of a turn, sixteenth of a turn sixteenth of a turn, this way all three parts of the chuck grab that spindle rod evenly I turn this on, I'm just looking for if there's really bad wobbling effect happening I'm going to clean this off in case there's any residual sawdust that I don't want on there. Good. All right. I'm going to get rid of all this pretty much poplar dust here. Put that in the garbage. And then we get started with the inside again. Get this out of the way. Put it on its magnet. All right, now I'm going to use the small spindle sander here and just kind of come from here down and go up the other side as well. There, here we go. Get 
in that corner. And work up the side good and slow. I'm putting a little bit of a moderate pressure up against the spindle here so I can get the sanding a little bit more in there so it doesn't jump away on me. And pretty much after every, well, start to, when I, when I finish the sanding from one side to the other, I have to clean off this grit here, otherwise it's not going to cut very well if I don't. I'm going to round that edge just a little bit. Keeping this flat to the surface. I'll go a little bit quicker this time. Just a little bit. Wherever I start feeling a bit of resistance, I'll go over that area again. Just and then we'll come up through here again. exactly sure what speed this is running at so I'm sure somebody or some of you out there are asking what's the speed that the drill press is running I don't really know it's one of the slower speeds anyways I don't really mind if it takes a little bit longer for this part of the sanding I'd rather go a little slower than to have something go wrong all right, here we go again. With this side. Okay, not too shabby. Now we're going to get in there and finish it off with some hand sanding. All right. So I'm going to get this hand sanded, then we're going to get it over back to the glue up table over there, and we're going to glue on the front and the back sides there. I'm going to clean this up just a little bit, a little scuff sanding with like a, I don't know, maybe a 400 grit sandpaper or whatever. Just so we can have a nice flush mating surface here on both sides. Right, so we've got our interior drawer that's been sanded. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put the back and front faces back on it. So, I'm going to get my uh, glue here again. And uh, I'm debating on the accelerator. I don't think I'm going to use the accelerator because I'm going to need that extra little bit of time to make the adjustments that I need to make in order to get this put on without it grabbing and me being out of luck as far as any micro movements that I'm going to need to make. So we get our glue here. Now I've lined this up here B, B, so this is going to go on like that. So we add our glue. Let me get this dried up stuff off of here. Just a light squeeze. Just get that in there. And then we just kind of like a paintbrush, I just kind of push it around. And we just get a good little bead in there like that. Get up the other edge here, up the other side. more to the outside than the inside. So this way any squeeze out will come out at the bottom it will be easier to sand away. Okay, so now that that's taken care of, then we take, without dropping it of course, we take our back piece, and I'm just going to wipe this on my pant leg here to get off whatever dust may be lingering around, and then we put this on, oops, on here, there's a comedy of errors starting to happen here. Okay, so let's get this put on. I want this to be flush here and here. That feels good. It's starting to get a bit of attack happening. That's flush. That's pretty good. I can still move it just a little bit. Not much now. Now I'm going to push down just a little. 
That feels good there. A little ridge there, but we're pretty much out of time. That's it. Okay, so now I'm just going to put pressure down on the outside, not on the inside. I don't want this to break or flip over and have an accident on me. So I'm going to push and hold this down. A good count of maybe, what, 15 should be good enough. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, eh, a couple more for a good measure. All right, so that's taken care of. There we go. Now we got a little bit of squeeze out out here, which is fine. Nothing major. That can be taken care of when we do a little bit of sanding. Just as a precaution, because I see just a couple things here. Just hit it with the accelerator on the outside instead of the inside, because that can always be sanded down. There we go. It's all good. Okay, and then I'll put a little bit of pressure down from here. Push straight down on it. Good. Now we're ready for the front part of the box. So here I got the letter F. Here's a letter F for front. So I know that the two letters kind of face each other. One is for the inside. The other is facing out so I can see it. That goes there. Okay, so everything looks pretty good. I'm feeling that it's going to line up pretty decently. Kind of like a dry fit before we go through with the actual glue up. And then I want to feel here what I need, where I need to be. Maybe about there, there, and there. That's perfect there. Good. Now time for the glue. Same as on the back. Just on a little line. If anything, I want more towards the outside edges than anything else. Now, to keep this from kind of keep pouring out, I'm going to flip this around the other way and just use this as a little bit of like a spreader. And pushing towards the outside lines, not the inside. go. Good. There's going to be a lot of squeeze out on that side. Okay, so I'm going to let that kind of run down just a little bit without it getting inside the box. <clears throat> Hopefully. Now, what I'm going to do, sometimes if you got just a little bit much in there, I'll just kind of Use something to scrape off some of the excess. Alright, so we're going to line this up again here. Get this all set to go. Alright. Now, you don't get too much time with this stuff, so let's hope for the best here. Okay, that's on there. It's already trying to tack on there. I don't have much time. And that is pretty good. Now I can put a little pressure down on there. Not crushing force. I don't need to crush it down. Just going to hold it for a few seconds there. Just to make sure that it's tacked. I'll put a little bit of the accelerator on the outside. And then add some more pressure to it. And that should be good. Down in the middle, let me feel that edge there. That's pretty good. I'm quite happy with that glue up. All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to get this back side just sanded a little bit. And this side sanded a little bit. We're going to get the back back on it. Let's see here. Yeah, that's my bandsaw mark, so that's where the cuts come in play here. I'm going to line this all up here. And this is why it's important that you do not sand the outside until everything is done so that this way, when you try to get everything put back together, you don't have a piece that's going to be sticking out like this or whatever with a, with a lip or a ledge here or something. I don't know if you can see it, but so you don't have something like that. Everything 
will go kind of flush, made up nicely, and then go from there. So, I'm going to get this all taken care of this way, that way. Good. So, we're just going to give this a little bit of a sanding, get rid of some of these little uh, cut marks here from the bandsaw, and we'll continue by gluing up the backs. Okay, we're back here. Uh, I've got it all sanded down, sanded my back. I uh, put my label with a little letter, uh, see if you can see it, B for back here, and B on this side, on this part here, which will be the uh, backing to the entire box. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get another B to glue on here. We're going to get the back on, and then we're going to uh, get the drawer in there, and we're going to sand the outside and then we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do for a drawer pull. So we get our bead of glue on there again once it starts to come out. Try to keep it to the upper part of the middle of the box and then here a little bit more to the outside and then for the feet I'm just gonna put it on there, come around here Okay, that's good, right there, and there, I'm going to flip this around so the glue stops coming out, and I'll use this as a little bit more of a brush. Too shabby. Push this to the outside corners. Alright, that's good. Now, just going to wipe this off, get the dust off of it. And then we're going to bring this down onto here gently, very gently. Just the weight of the wood on it, basically. Yeah, we're pretty good, so we're going to put some pressure down on that. Make sure. Count of 15 or so. There we go. And then I'll hit the accelerator on the outside again here. upper part here. I'll push down again. About a count of, no, I don't know, five or ten anyways. Okay, that's ten. That's good. All right, so that's our box. That is most of it taken care of. And now, the drawer itself, we're going to go and just give it a little light sanding, get rid of some of these little ridges that are going on here. And then we'll get this box to kind of fit inside here together. Be helpful if I uh, had this all kind of lining up the right way. Okay. That will go in like that. And then our box will sit something. Something like that anyways. And then get the drawer pull. So I'm going to take this over, we're going to sand it, figure out what I want to do for a drawer pull, and then we'll continue. Okay, we're going to start the sanding here at uh, 80 grit. I've got 80 grit on the sander right now. And I'm going to move it up to 100, 120, and then a 220, and then we're going to see how it goes from there. Uh, I'll probably also take it over to my belt sander and drop the feet down on it on the flat surface so I make sure that I can kind of sand the feet area and on a level hard surface hopefully it'll be sanded flush level so it'll be a perfect flat surface it's gonna sit on here with the legs so we'll get this all started uh, we're gonna also try to just come in here really gently you can see the glue line there from the uh, from the accelerator on the cyanoacrylate glue and then uh, as far as uh, other stuff maybe on the belt sander I might 
hit the back a little bit here and I might kind of just touch up the front just a little bit here and then uh, get on to sanding a little bit of the drawer not too much I don't want to create that big gap like I talked about earlier and then after that I'm gonna work on my drawer pull I decided to go with the African blackwood again but instead of like a little knob that sticks out like like this I'm gonna have it on its side I drew out a bit of a shape here I'm gonna modify it you can see it on the camera there and then I'll kind of somehow put it on the drawer front something to that effect there you'll see when it's done we're getting ahead of ourselves now so I'm gonna begin the sanding process and uh, get this party started last thing I need to do is get myself a dust mask and then oh, there it is right there turn on my dust collection and my miserable shop vac unit that I don't really care for but when you're using this kind of a sander it's it is a benefit and then we'll get this thing sanded and going from there so turn on my dust collection and my shop vac So what I've done here is I've hit it with a couple of grits of sandpaper. I'm going to put the 220 on and I hit it with that now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to moisten a little shop towel and just kind of wet the wood just a little bit because it's going to raise the grain of the poplar. And then when I sand it down, I'll never have to worry about grain raising and the finish will look better and everything like that. And uh, yeah, then I'll get this over to the... Uh, uh, belt sander there and work on it a little bit more and then uh, that pretty much be it work on the drawer and we're ready for the finish sanding with 220 so with the grain Paper, unplug it just a little bit there. over to the belt sander and continue it and finish it off from there just take a couple seconds on it so I'm gonna get that taken care of be right back I switched over my sanding belt to a 180 grit and uh, it's been obviously used up a little bit so it's kind of feeling more along the lines of like a uh, 
a 220-ish kind of a grip. So we're going to run with this one. Uh, I'm going to get my uh, air filter going and turn on my dust collector. Get this thing fired up and do some uh, light sanding on the box and the drawer. And then uh, hopefully by then we can work on the pole. And then we can get it all glued up and ready for the finish. Alright, so let me get my stuff turned on and away we go. part of the sand, I want to sand with the grain. I don't want the belt sander and the sandpaper going against the grain, causing a rougher surface. I don't need that. With zebra wood, it's a very fibrous wood. It's got a lot of these little fibers that can tear out and become very prickly. So I'm going with the grain. And in order to go with the grain, the sandpaper is going that way. I have to follow the grain with the sandpaper going that way, so it takes off the wood and actually smoothens it and not make things worse. Keep rocking it around so it doesn't burn and so that you don't get your workpiece sitting in clogged up sandpaper so that's why I keep moving it around. up on the bottom here. I'm not going to put too much pressure down, but enough to hold it so it doesn't go flying away on me.
it's still on there. It's a good practice to get the sandpaper unclogged before you shut your machine off so it's ready to go for the next project. So now what we'll do, we're going to take everything back over to the table. We're going to start getting the pole ready and once that's cut out and set up we'll glue it on and continue from there. Right now what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit the, the box here with a little bit of mineral spirits. I'm just going to get some of that dust out of some of the pores, clean up the wood a little bit, and it'll give me a little bit of an idea what it's going to look like when I put the, the finish on it. I haven't decided on the finish, but most likely, once again, it'll probably be an oil. Now there's pretty much the difference of what it's going to look like, in a nutshell anyways, but that's what it looks like when you put probably an oil or a finish on it. This is the unfinished look down here. So you can see it's a little bit starved, just like every other wood that has no finish on it. Kind of is a little bit starved for some kind of moisture of some sort. All right, so let's get this key going here. Let's get this project rolling here. A little more mineral spirits on there. You can see it's picking up some dust better than if I would have just wiped it on my shirt. That's for sure. Maybe a little bit of that kind of staining coming out of the poplar there. Alright, so that's that. A little more on here. grain in here so this is really gonna soak up if I put an oil on here or whatever I decide to do. Now this kind of interesting this poplar here has actually got a little bit of a it's not really curly but it's kind of like a quilted kind of a quilting look to it. I don't know maybe it's just me. But you can see the little darker patches in there. This might be because of the. I also, when I look at the green lines, they're not quarter sawn, but they're just off to the side. And usually, sometimes I see that with maple, you get that quilted or that uh, figured effect or that curly thing going on. So it's kind of looking the same just a little bit with that poplar there, which would be, if that's the case, that'd be pretty darn cool. And lucky. Alright, so I'm going to get in here, just get the fibers of dust that are stuck in there. A little bit more mineral spirits here. Let's get the bottom there. Up the sides. Right up in the corners and everything. It's all very important to get as much out as you can. Since you're already here, you might as well do the job properly. Good. That yeah, looks pretty good. I got pretty much everything. I should hope so. I've been rubbing it long enough. That takes care of that. Now we're going to move on to the drawer part here and then get our pull, mark it out, cut it, get ready from there. Okay, good. Alright, so 
I'm going to get this all put away. I'm going to get set up with my pole now. up nicely so that it's flush. The best way that I found is just a square, combination square, whatever you got there, and then we just line it up and that's it. And that, if you can see, is what it's going to look like. Right, I've got my pull set up here. Now I haven't cut anything out or anything, I'm still just trying to figure out the exact um, length and such and the shape of how I want it. I'm going to have it somewhat follow a little bit of the contour of the entire box itself, but I don't think I want it to be this big. I don't want it to be a, a pole that takes up most of the box. I think I'm going to pretty much have it so that it's going to be about maybe an inch and a half or so, something to that effect. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my uh, little china marker here and then I'm going to wind up drawing out something here that's going to mimic a little bit of the shape of the actual drawer itself. So let me see here, I'm going to bring this over. Maybe I'll start it from about, I also got to keep in mind that it's got a few cracks here so hopefully it doesn't uh, do too much in the way of uh, continue to crack as it gets older but this has been like this for quite some time. I really don't see this getting that brutal and if it does end up breaking off for whatever reason possible I can always just take it off and then redo it but I don't see that happening so anyways enough with the mumbling and the, and the excuses here so let's get this done so I'm going to take this here and I'm going to come in about oh I don't know let's come from here and then I'm gonna come down just a little bit not too much I'll come up about here and then we're just going to drop this down something like this like I said before I'm good going one way once you get me going the other way forget about it I'm not that great when it comes to this kind of drawing now I don't what I, when, I, when I do this kind of a thing I don't like the way the top comes down so much so I'm going to soften that line up just a little And then we're going to come down a little bit harder here. And something like something like that anyways. And then when that goes on there, it'll be about that size. So we'll see how that goes. All right, and then we'll end up sanding it on my uh, one inch belt sander over there. So let me get this all cut up. We'll rearrange the camera for the bandsaw cam and we'll get this cut. All right, give me a moment. Okay, we're all set up here. So I'm gonna turn on my dust collection and then we're gonna get this drawer pull cut out here. So let's get started. safety note, please don't imitate what I do. I'm doing this freehand and most likely most of it without a push stick. If you ever do this freehand or work on small parts, please be careful.
so we got that cut out, taken care of. Let me get this uh, zoomed in the proper way here. So now we're going to go take this over to the one inch belt sander, clean it up a little bit, get rid of a lot of these little ridges, and then uh, see how she looks. Alright, let's go over to the belt sander. I've got my piece here ready to be sanded. When I was at the bandsaw, I saw the other piece here that I cut off from the top. I don't know how you're going to be able to see this if I do it like that. So I, I was originally working on this piece, so I'm going to sand that one down. But then I saw this one and thought it would be a little interesting if we had just a, a real thin sliver for a pull. So I'm going to do both pieces. I'm going to sand them both. We're going to see how they look in the end. I'm probably going to still go with the original thicker one, but we'll just see how this turns out. Okay, so I'm going to turn this all on and get this party started. Be really careful, you don't want to sand your fingers here. And a light touch really does a lot more than just pushing it right in. I can do a lot more fine tuning with a gentle touch. Bad. I want to clean up the sandpaper a little bit. Still getting a little bit of that leftover red heart in here. So we get our sanding belt. sanding for that and then we'll see how that looks. Let's see what we can do with that. Okay, I was able to thin it down. Not as thin as this one. I didn't really care for how thin this one was. So you can tell there's just a little bit of a difference as far as how thick the bottom one is in relation to the top one. I didn't want it this thin. So I worked it down with the hand sanding and I'm going to pretty much go with a bit of a crescent shape. Not so much the sharp edges on the top that kind of wing out that little bit. I'm just going with a bit of a crescent shape. So what we're going to do is I'm going to find my center, get this glued on, and then uh, we're done. We're ready for finishing. So I'm going to get this set up. We're going to head over to the glue table area there. So I got a little bit more uh, space and, and access to more of the stuff I'm going to need. And then we'll begin the finishing process. I'm using my center finding ruler to find where my center point is going to be. And when I look at this here, it looks like 3 and 7 sixteenths on each side is pretty much where this levels out to be. And then there's my zero, which will indicate where center is. And I'm going to take uh, my pencil, a sharp pencil, and put a very, very, very light mark in. The reason why I'm not going to use the china marker is because the white color will get into the open grain and will be very, well, not very, but it'll be more visible 
it's a little bit harder to get it out of the grain, uh, especially an open grain like the zebra would. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pencil, and because the, the, the lead is fairly dark, and the grain lines here, there's some dark grain lines in there, I'm going to kind of hide my mark. It'll be a little easier to hide it. So I'm going to come in here, there's my zero, just that little tiny mark, only pretty much I'm going to be able to see that. It might show up on camera, you never know. And then from there, I'm going to figure out where along this part here is center. So I don't need a center finding ruler for that. That's a little ridiculous to use something, you know, two feet long to find something that's pretty much like an inch and a quarter or something, inch and a half. So what I'm going to wind up doing is I'm going to use my little six inch here and I'm going to put my finger up against here and then I'm going to figure out the measurement somewhere along this area here and then once I figure that out so we're looking at an inch and well, it's not quite an inch and a half so we're looking at it doesn't fall into the eighths category so it's two four six seven sixteenths so we got to divide seven sixteenths which would be three and a half so we're going to go half inch and then one two three and a half so it's going to line up right about there that is going to be the center point right here that dot so I'm not sure if you can see it Let's see if we can zoom in slightly this little mark right there looks like the fly went to the washroom on it right there alright that's my center point so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my glue I'm going to get a little more light down here and then we're going to get my pull just here now this side's pretty smooth over here this side's pretty smooth over here too so I'm going to have my which side is going to look better this side or this side yeah, we're going to go with this side here so get our glue on there just the smallest of small amounts it's kind of bubbling on me there there we go I just got a drop on there and now I'm just going to spread it around I don't even I don't even need to squeeze the bottle at all all right now I go to where my center point is I need all the light help I'm going to be able to get here and then from there we locate where center would be on here just eyeball it doesn't have to be perfect doesn't need to be absolutely bang on perfect but that's looking okay there I'll bring this end up just a touch if I still can yep yeah, just barely just a micro hair of a fraction of a millimeter. All right, we push down, give that a count of about, I don't know, 10, 15. By the time uh, I get set up for the next process, this thing will be dried on there pretty good. Now, as far as this box is concerned, it took me, mm, in total, if I, if I was able to dedicate more hours to it yesterday, this box would have taken me two days. And one day basically was lost again to the laminating. The process of milling the wood, getting the wood glued together, and then letting it sit overnight for that glue to cure, uh, or to at least dry. It won't be fully cured, but to at least dry to the point where I'm able to take the clamps off clean up the glue lines from the squeeze out and such and begin the actual process of turning it into a box so this whole thing basically took about two days if I was working on a piece that was just a, a single piece like walnut at one day because there's no you know you're not dealing with long glue ups and stuff like that from laminating you don't need to use cyanoacrylate to, to glue up a big box really you just need it for like the drawer fronts and backs and the box back because you're just doing kind of outline work you don't need to waste that much 
crazy glue on, on something like that. So I use um, uh, just regular yellow glue. Um, I use Tight Bond uh, Original because this isn't going to really need much in the way of moisture protection. It's not going to be outside, so I don't need Tight Bond 3. Tight Bond Original is a much less expensive glue. Uh, Lee Valley even has uh, their own glue. You can get away with that as well. Um, but yeah, I basically go with Tight Bond Original for a lot of my projects, especially if they're going to be just indoors. Uh, when I was doing my daughter's birdhouse, uh, we did the Tight Bond uh, 3 because it's going to be outdoors. So, uh, once we got that on, that's on there. So that's what it looks like. That's our drawer pull. That was the end of that. That was uh, a quick and easy step. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to get this in here. We're going to have a look and see how this looks. Grab my straight edge. There we go. All right, so that's what she looks like. If you can see that from where you are without me tilting it too much, all you can do is actually bring the camera down and then you might be able to see this a little bit better. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to, like I said before, I'm just going to put a little moisture on this to just raise that grain, a little scuff sanding, clean it up, and then it's finishing time. So I'll get that done. Next time we get the camera turned on, we'll be doing the finish. And then we'll get this project done. Stick around. Okay, before we get to the actual oiling of it, I'm going to use this uh, <clears throat> pre-stained wood conditioner. Uh, basically be something that will act as a bit of a pore filler here. Especially on that zebra wood. You've heard me mention several times about the basic uh, the grain itself having many of these really 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 open pores so I'm going to use this and a little uh, acid brush here just to get that spread on then we're going to use uh, a little cloth here to wipe off the excess so I've got this stirred up pretty good we're going to go ahead and start getting this taken care of what I should do just for any spills and all that fun stuff to help preserve my little makeshift glue up table here is that all right so I get my brush in here and start putting on the pore filler just gentle even strokes back and forth a little bit more get it all in there it's got a consistency like water so I don't want to overdo it but I don't think I have much of a choice here the way this is kind of going on all right so that side's taken care of it goes pretty quick you know let's just wipe it on and go from there the end grain is just sucking that right up that just inhaled it it's not even sitting on the surface that just drank it right in there gone 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 Look at that. Alright, get that into the end grain of the zebra wood. Get a little bit more here. Shake off the excess a little bit there. Now, I've already raised the grain and sanded with 600 grit sandpaper, so I'm not going to worry about raising the grain again here. It'll only raise once. So. I'm uh, glad I did that step instead of just rushing through for the sake of getting the project done. You know, there's probably a lot of people who do that. You know, they don't really care to raise the grain. They don't think that it's going to make that much of a difference, but it actually does. You feel it uh, before you add the water, like when you, after you finish sanding it, and then you feel it. You can feel it's a little bit still furry, especially with the poplar. And then when I kind of dampened the cloth and wiped it all over the wood and let it dry, you could really feel the wood was was kind of furry, like fuzzy. So with the 600 grit sandpaper, that took care of that. And now it feels quite a bit smoother. There actually really is a difference. 
So it's not uh, something for the sake of making you work more or work harder. It really does work. Okay, now we'll get to the top of this. And just work that in there into the pores of the zebra wood and then right into the poplar itself. And uh, this pre-stain will also prevent blotching and, and woods like cherry and stuff like that that have that tendency to not look very good when you put <clears throat> like a shellac or something on it because of the way the grain is. It just looks uneven and patchy, just blotchy. That's, that's why they call it blotchy. So this really does kind of help out with that. All right, so we've gotten all that taken care of, so we have to let this sit like it says. Oh, i got to get the front. That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? So we're going to let it sit for about, yeah, I don't know, 10 minutes will be more than enough, I think. And then we just kind of buff it with a cloth. Let's see here, according to the exact instructions here, let it penetrate five to ten minutes and remove the excess with a clean dry cloth. So, not sure how much there's going to be in the way of excess. However, I'm going to just get into here as well and just get the inner edges. So, I'm not really going to oil much in there. But I do want to fill up these pores and stuff too, just to make it a little bit more uniform looking when you open up the drawer. There we go. Alright, so, follow the instructions. I'm going to let this stand for about five minutes, and then we're just going to pretty much be dry. I don't know what a drip, what a dry cloth is going to do, but we'll follow the instructions. We'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, it's been uh, about mm, close to 10 minutes anyways. While I was uh, uh, dealing with a few other things, I've already taken care of this drawer, so now we're ready to get this wiped off. So, because I've done this before the drawer, we'll start taking care of this with that uh, clean cloth. And I'm just going to push down with some pretty good pressure here, just back and forth and a couple circular motions here just to get in there and then back and forth with the grain and then we'll take off all of this excess wood conditioner and get in there, down in the feet there, get all this excess stuff off it's not really going to have a lot that's going to come off, but just to get off whatever can be picked up by these shop towels. Alright. Okay, now we just got these sides to get done. been taken care of. Let's get the drawer done. Okay, that's it. Done. It's been all wiped off. Now we're ready for the finish. So, let me go and grab my walnut oil and I shall be back in a second here. Okay, that is good and hot. Alright, so now, I guess the best thing to do, let's get this uh, out of the way, and we'll put this on here to protect that, get a fresh sheet of this cloth here, and then we take our very hot walnut oil, I should fold this over again, give me a little extra control, and... Yeah, that is hot. 
Okay, wipe that in. Let that soak in there. That is pretty darn good looking stuff. The sides feel really silky smooth, especially after raising the grain like that. I'm actually surprised with the feel. Pleasantly surprised. Alright, get the little bit of oil inside of there. It doesn't have to be very thick, just enough to moisten the wood. Maybe I should keep this over on there. That'd be a better idea. And then this. Get this into that zebra wood. There we go. Now I'm going to do a little something unorthodox here. I'm going to pour it on just ever so slightly. That was a little more than slightly. All right, you don't want to plan kind of backfires on you. <laughs> all right, anyways, take all this excess oil. It's just walnut oil. It's all good. All right. Put that there. All right, let's get some more oil. I want this to be pretty heavily oiled here, the first coat. I want it to really get into those... It's not going to get too far into the pores because we use that pore filler, but I really want to get the first coat on there pretty decent without being sloppy. I want it to work itself as much into the wood as possible, even though that the pore filler is there, and then the lighter cuts. Uh, sorry, the lighter coats of oil after that won't matter too much because much like that red heart box, after three coats it started to bleed oil for a little while because it was pretty saturated so it wouldn't accept any more oil than three coats which is kind of a good thing without making it too wet. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Let's get to the drawer now and get that finished and then our first coat of oil will be taken care of. So let's open this up to a little bit of a fresh surface. This way in case there's any dust or whatever on there. We're not just going to spread it all around the drawer as well. A little bit of a messy process, but it's just oil. Now, again, like I had mentioned in the first uh, video I did, the other bandsaw box, the Red Heart there, anybody with a nut allergy, obviously don't use walnut oil. Uh, or if you're going to give this as a gift, make sure the person or anybody in that family that you're giving this as a gift to does not have some kind of nut allergy. So, and if they do, use a different finish, or give them a different gift, <laughs> if it's too late. Alright, so the walnut oil is in the zebra wood, it's on the black wood, it's on the sides. Now we're just going to do very little inside here, just to keep the wood moist and to keep from letting it soak through the end grain like it did on the ash wood on the other box we made together there. Alright, that's pretty much it for the first coat. There isn't too much more I can really do with this. I keep putting it in and it keeps kind of absorbing pretty good. The black wood is not absorbing really anything. It's just kind of sitting on there. Which is kind of to be expected because black wood is an extremely dense grain wood with no real grain pattern to it. I 
All right, so I'm going to let that soak into the wood for a little bit there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe off the excess. I'm going to have a look and see. There's no pooling. It's uh, absorbing pretty good. I want to get in there and just hit the very back inside at the bottom there with the oil I already have on this rag or cloth or whatever you want to call it here. Shop towel. Alright, that's it. We're going to leave this alone now for a little bit. Let's see how it goes. And then uh, we'll come back a little bit later, throw another coat of oil on. And uh, yeah, see how many coats of oil we can get on this thing before we're finished. So, the next time we come back, you'll be looking at pretty much the finished product. Uh, it's going to be nothing else to do until then, so we'll see you at the finish line. All right, stay tuned. Okay, well, the project has come to a completion, and uh, as you can see, it turned out pretty decently. Um, the zebra wood and the poplar actually work pretty good together. I'm, I'm actually quite surprised about that. I thought that the poplar would be pretty blotchy and stuff. But I think that wood conditioner actually helped out. Uh, and then also, as I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the way that the grain pattern is actually creates a little bit of a kind of like a curly effect for it. So that was pretty cool the way that worked out. And then that's the back of the box. I have specifically chose which side was front and back for their designs. All in all, this project took me two days to complete. One day was the, as I mentioned earlier, the lamination, gluing up the, the stock and letting that sit overnight for the glue to harden. Uh, and then coming back the next day and then getting everything else done. The drawer itself, uh, pretty much the same as, as my other box, but the drawer pull itself I decided to do that little different uh, accent piece on it. Just a something that doesn't take away from the box but kinda stays in the same general color family, doesn't stand out like a sore thumb. Uh, instead of going with a bit more of a rounder knob or a square knob like I did with the other box, I thought this would be cool as more of like a crescent shaped sliver effect. So all in all, it turned out to be Pretty neat little project to do. Finished it with the uh, walnut oil again. Uh, it just seemed like a pretty good option <clears throat> to bring out uh, a little bit of the depth, uh, especially of the poplar, the curly poplar, I guess we can call it. Uh, basically the same as my uh, figured Sipo box, the same shape and design. This one is about maybe half inch shorter uh, in, in width. Uh, depth wise, not really sure. I think it's a close to the same. I haven't really done any measurements. But uh, all in all, uh, did pretty good. Uh, with, with the rest of all my other projects here, I kind of sign and date and put the type of woods that I used. Uh, the end grain soaked up a lot of oil. I mean, as soon as you wipe it in, it's just gone. The zebra wood, not so much. It's stuck on the surface more. Uh, but the poplar really just soaked that oil right up on both sides there. Uh, but it's very silky smooth. Uh, it, it's, it's got that real soft texture to it. it. It's a real nice feeling. I like it. So yeah, that's that's the bandsaw box. This is basically what it looked like after with all the oil on it. You can still see it's got still got a little bit of oil on it. It's, it's a little wet in spots. It has to get uh, cleaned off. But the original wood looked like this. I'll try not to get my oily fingerprints all over it. But that's the, the difference there. That's the before and after kind of a look to it there. See if I can kind of zoom in on it and see. You might be able to see for yourself uh, how it looks there. So you can see the difference. That's the uh, original dried out looking version there. And then we've got after the sealer and the oil is on there. That's what that looks like. That's got that nice shine to it. So anyways, that's uh, pretty much it. A couple days to do. Uh, I'm going to let this uh, oil cure for maybe a couple weeks. See if it bleeds out like the Red Heart box did for a day there. And then just keep wiping the oil off of it. Just kind of keep buffing it. And then I'm going to add like uh, some kind of like a paste wax to it. Um, something that hopefully 
I'm going to do it on the test piece and, and make sure that it doesn't really overly darken the wood or change the color around. But a little light paste wax on there just to keep the shine and keep the, the silky feel to it. The next project I'm going to work on that you're going to see, if I can uh, get this zoomed out a little bit here, we're going to work on the lathe. We're going to make a box. Uh, sorry, not a box. <laughs> we're getting sick of boxes, aren't we? We're going to make a bowl on the lathe. And we're going to use a few different woods here. Uh, we're going to end up using uh, uh, cherry on the outsides, and then we got walnut, and then we've got aromatic cedar, and then we've got iroko. So this is going to be pretty interesting. We're going to take this, we're going to glue it all up, laminate it, and once it's all glued up, I'm going to measure out about nine inches, nine and a half inches or so. Uh, my lathe can take a 10 inch capacity. So then what we're going to do is, after this is laminated, kind of cut a bit of a circular pattern out on the bandsaw, and then we're going to end up making a bowl on the lathe. So, stick around for that show. Once that uh, is ready to get fired up, and once it's complete, I'll have that video up for you as well. I'm interested to see how this is going to wind up looking. I've never done a laminated bowl before, so this will be uh, kind of a new challenge, new project. So, hope you'll watch and uh, we'll see how it turns out together. Alright, thanks for watching. Have a great day.